What have we been talking about? The Bible, Old Testament stuff. Was it a happy story we talked about last week? Not so much, no. Do you think things got better after that? Or did they get worse? They got a lot worse. Here's how the next chapter begins. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination that his thoughts in his heart had was only continually evil. That's kind of a lot worse. But worse. And the Lord, it says the Lord was sorry he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth. What does it mean to blot out? And if you write with a pencil, you have an eraser. So, kind of like that. Erase. Gone. For I am sorry that I have made him. But, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So is God going to kill everybody? No. So this is the basic point. Now you know the story, right? So God comes to Noah and he tells him, I want you to build a really, 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 really big boat. Actually, I'm guessing he said, build an ark. And Noah said, what's an ark? That's a joke. You don't have to laugh. And God said, well, it's a really, really big boat. But anyway. God told Noah to build an ark, and he told him exactly how to build it. Now, we could get distracted with the big question of would an ark that size have actually held all of the animals? And could there actually have been a worldwide flood? And so on and so forth and stuff. But that isn't what's important. What is important is that when God saw the sinfulness of humankind. He said, this is not okay. This has to stop. Why do you think God cares that sin stop? Does it hurt God when we sin? You're right. We can't hurt God. Not in the way that we think of being hurt. So who does it hurt when human beings sin. Us. Humankind was destroying itself. So when God sends the flood, this isn't as though if he hadn't sent the flood all these people would have lived forever. They would have done worse to each other and to themselves. Only God can make this call, but sometimes the big judgments that we see in the Bible. These are mercy. They are not condemnation. Humankind had given itself over so much to evil that if they had continued, it would have been worse for them than that they were all wiped out. So we don't know. We don't know what comes on the other side of death. We don't know if maybe on the other side of death, God takes the children, the innocents, those who had been being raised in this environment of wickedness, and those who had repented, and brings them into paradise to wait for the resurrection. He might. He is a loving and a merciful God. This is what's important. When we see these big judgments, we need to understand God loves us, and even in the condemnation and the destruction of the flood, there is love. He keeps humankind then from hurting each other and themselves even more. Their life is taken away, but maybe some of their souls are saved. Does that make sense? Okay, that's good. Here's the other point. When God sees that the world is given over entirely to wickedness and it has to be destroyed, does he say, so we're done, no more human beings, forget about it, this whole creation was a mistake? Not quite. 
he finds a righteous man and a righteous man's family and he says okay we're going to try to start over and that's your job so build a big boat the really the boat wasn't the ark that saved humankind it was technically it saved it from the flood but Noah this righteous man this man who loved God he was the ark right because in him and his family humankind got out of the wickedness and brokenness that had been before the flood and came through into a new world a clean world which has been a little bit better at least it's not given over absolutely to wickedness the world we have now is more like what you say yeah kind of worse kind of a little bit right okay so Noah and his family they carry the hopes of all humankind through the flood they are the vessel vessel right the the ark the boat the boat that carries hope and life and all of us at least according to this story which we don't have to take literally but we can all of us are descended from them right now what's the other point because this is too big of a story to talk about all at once we're gonna get them into the boat Noah his wife and his three sons and their three wives right all of them need to get into the boat and then we'll leave them there and talk about it next week fair so the other point when the fathers of the church look at this passage look at this description of a wicked world and of a man who builds an ark and he himself really is the ark they see a type a shadow a prophecy of Jesus and the church sometimes we can even look up at the roof of the church and think it kind of looks like we're in an upside down boat look back there see it's peaked it keeps the water out the water that comes from the sky not the water if we were upside down please nobody try to turn the church upside down but think of it that way the church building is like an ark and we come into it to be saved from the wickedness that is outside but at the end of the day we are the boat we are the ark we bring hope and righteousness and light and love into the world that's why we don't live here we go out and then we come back in to get recharged and strengthened and fed and then we go back out again right so if you think about Noah's Ark remember those things sometimes there's so much wickedness that God has to judge he judges in love and mercy not in anger and he always finds a means of saving what can be saved and of building towards hope and love and life and he does that with us with you and you and yeah, you all of us so with this in mind let's stand up let's take communion